sharpen the pencil again. At least this time, it's a pencil and not a Bic. You might think the blank page Molly's expending so much energy avoiding is more of her infamous poetry, or the opening to the great American novel, or at least the first chapter of the definitive book on the 60s everybody's been waiting for. No, it's just a resume. But when you've been as peripatetic as my daughter has, following her heart and whim from one odd job to the next, constructing a respectable resume is a true act of creative writing. Molly Bickford Dodd, jazz singer, nearly unpublished poet, condo salesperson, used bookseller. Does such a collection of credits constitute a career? I think not. She'll be up late concocting this one because tomorrow she's got an interview with a publishing house. Thanks to a lightly pulled string courtesy of my new beau, Arthur Feldman. Which galls Molly, but not so much she won't go. It could be a wonderful job. Well, it's proofreading, but it's a start. Ah, oh, there's the kettle. Well, now is as good a time as any for tea break. God knows she deserves it. On occasion, I think of writing poetry as essentially adolescent. I don't. An adolescent pursuit in the best sense. That overwhelming passion, that glandular intensity. Uh -huh. Most people grow out of it. Anyway, you were saying? I was saying, well, no, I was trying to say, uh, that given my interest, it just seemed to make sense. For I see you were a jazz singer. Well, yes, I was, uh, of sorts. <laughs> And I wrote lyrics, which were probably pubescent as opposed to adolescent. But that was just a diversion, a detour. I married the sax player. There's always a sax player. Not always, but there was for me. Uh, go on. Ah, oh, so I thought, um, oh, and no, please don't interrupt me. I thought that publishing would be the natural thing for me to do. Given your background in books and poetry. Yes, and my lifelong infatuation with the split infinitive. How's your grammar? Pretty good. I have a problem with lie, lay. Who doesn't? Indeed. I, and if it was, and if it were, it tends to make my life miserable. But other than that, as far as I'm concerned, grammar is the author's problem. Spelling? Uh, oh, excellent. Uh, never less than first runner-up in various B's in various schools in the Suffolk and Nassau County public school systems. I see you were referred by Arthur Feldman. A wonderful man. I adore him. Mm. In fact, he introduced me to Keith. Uh, your husband? My significant other. Of course. <laughs> and Arthur Feldman is Zachary's godfather. That's your son. Zacharino. Could you just eat him up? He's beautiful. I know. Mm. Molly, <clears throat> I don't think you're qualified to be a proofreader. Uh, Miss Reddick, Sarah, I, no, I'm literate. You know, I am certain that I can learn all those little signs and arrows. I think you're overqualified. Absolutely not. I'm hardly qualified. I have barely done anything. Oh, in your age. How old are you? I, I don't see it here. More than 37. Shouldn't be starting at an entry-level position. You know, I just turned 30. Oh. The big 3-0. It wasn't that traumatic. I dealt with it. Well, you're very brave. Got time for an anecdote? Uh, yeah. A friend of mine. About your age, maybe a little younger, was standing on a street corner, and a carload of kids drove by and shouted at him, Big chill, get over it. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> That's a true story. Wow, <laughs> what you young people put up with. Anyway, you'd be wasted in proofreading. However, I do have something else I'd like you to consider. Something more suited to your experience. CEO? You don't want that job. 
stress is stratospheric. No, what I have in mind is we do a lot of celebrity autobiographies. My life in show business kinds of things. We match the celebrity with an editor cum ghostwriter. Interested? Well, I did have my heart set on proofreading, but, you know, tell me more. Well, it usually involves a certain amount of hand-holding, probing questions, and a great deal of patience. Plus, hanging out at the star's house or hotel suite for days on end until you get the manuscript. So I could order room service. I think you'd be perfect. You have such maturity and eclectic experience, my goodness. And some of the older stars hate to have lunch with editors who wear braces on their teeth. Hmm, what do you say? Can I think about it? That is great for us. We have something coming up in two weeks. A famous bisexual athlete's wife wants to spill her guts. Should make for lively reading. I'd really like to think about it. Don't be silly. And I look forward to working with you. Two weeks from today? Uh, I really have to clear a few things up. Uh, I'll send a memo around about finding you an office. Mm -hmm. The legal department will be in touch about salary and so on. Oh, well, you know, if the money is right... It's I... not great, but the work is stimulating. Sealed deal. Oh, I... How is it out there? It's still winter. Yeah, it does. Hang on. Could be the new ice age coming. You ever wonder what would happen if the Earth was struck by giant asteroids? I imagine there'd be big dents. Oh, I tell you, there'd be hell to pay. And not to mention if the poles shifted. Sheer chaos. Let's not forget the greenhouse effect. And the hole in the ozone. I see you've been reading the science section of the New York Times again. Terrifying. Apocalyptic. And you, Miss Dodd, any luck finding a little temporary employment before a worldwide economic collapse throws us all out in the street? Well, as a matter of fact, I've uh, just been offered a job in publishing. Uh, that proofreader thing came through. Congratulations. The editor. Working with writers, helping them shape manuscripts. No kidding. No, I don't think so. Sounds a golden opportunity. When do you start? In a few weeks, if I start. Oh, uh, there's a hair in the ointment? Well... It's in an office. Uh, I'm probably going to have to buy some of those shoes with sensible heels, put them in my purse, and go to work in sneakers, which I swore I was never going to do. And then there's my boss, who is just very young. You know, like a yuppie with a bullet. How old is he? She, 30 years old, doesn't look a day over 25. Oh, ugly. Gorgeous, as in drop dead. I wouldn't worry about that. You can hold your own anywhere. A ripe rose will always overshadow the callow bud. The Blarney boat will be stopping here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Davy. Hi, it's your mother. Arthur and I'd like to take you out to dinner to celebrate your new job. Call me. No. Nathaniel Hawthorne. You're under arrest. Police humor. Funny, huh? Oh, yeah, you crazy cops, you. Well, we're a wacky group, us boys in blue. <laughs> May I come in? Well, please. I can only stay a minute. I was just in the neighborhood. Um, my partner's downstairs waiting on me. We're uh, checking out an attempted rape around the corner. Ah, well, that's comforting. So, you've been good? Good? You? Good. Well, it's good to see you, mate. I really thought about you. So you've been good? Yep. That guy. What guy? Last time I saw you, you said there was a guy. Oh, that guy. That guy has been in Switzerland. I just got a postcard from him today. Just sorted Alps. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's too bad. <laughs> You, you ought to make a minimal effort to conceal your glee. Sorry. Well, in that case, would, um... Would you like to have a drink tonight? Sure. Yeah? Oh, that's great. <laughs> Look, I know this, this piano bar in the village that... I'm there. Great. Well, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Don't you leave town. Yes, officer. Just 
if I could give up on you. What, what are you moving in? Now, they're addressed to you. I signed for them. The UPS guy was very grateful he didn't have to lug it all back to the truck. I didn't order these. The return address says Bickford. My mother. Oh, that would be my guess. My mother. They've got that well-wrapped mom kind of feel. Mm. So, can we go in, maybe uh, chat? Sure, let's do that. Should we move those boxes out of the hall? Uh, no, no. Uh, I'll get Davy to help me with it later. You think I can't lift them? Why would I think that? <sighs> Shows, doesn't it? Whatever do you mean? Come on. I know Gail told you. I know you're mad at me. What? Oh, you mean about your being pregnant? Why would I be mad at you? No, if someone had told me, maybe I would even be happy for you. Tea? Fine. You don't think it's stupid? No, I don't think it's stupid. Well, I think it's stupid. I think it could be wonderful. Well, you would. <sighs> what does that mean? This is something you would do. Something to gum up the works. I mean, there are repercussions here. You mean once a child actually emanates from the canal? How's this gonna look? Breastfeeding during meetings. Analyzing some guy's stock report while I'm changing a diaper? They're not gonna take me seriously on Wall Street. Well, yes, these are all very real fears. You think I'm carrying too low? No, you're short-waisted. Oh. God, this feels so weird. Why don't you just enjoy it? You know, you might look on this as a blessing. Well, if you think this is all so great, why haven't you done it? I don't know. But, hey, listen, you know, this is your game plan, not mine. Are you jealous? Maybe. I mean, someday I wouldn't mind being huge. See? I knew it. See what? We're the wrong people. Look, Nina, I'll tell you what. Give me $5,000. I'll have your baby for you. You see, that way, I won't have to listen to you bitch and moan, and I could use the cash. I heard you left that bookstore job. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, speaking of people who shouldn't be parents. So where do you go from here? Well, I've got several irons in the fire. Your life is so ridiculous. Why do I want it? Because you're adopted. I'm not adopted. I oh, know, I'm sorry, I wasn't supposed to tell you. How is this? Mm. Tepid. Oh, did you want it hot? No, tepid swell. You got any, uh, Napoleons? Uh, no, I have old grapes. Nothing made with just butter? I have butter. Can I have a stick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm kind of scared. Mm. No, I know. I should have told you sooner. It doesn't matter. So, who's the father? Nobody. I did this all on my own. Well, I don't know if that's possible unless you're extraordinarily limber. You don't know him. Well, do I get to meet him? He lives far away. What do you mean, far away? Saturn? Delaware. Ah. Maybe I could get there by covered wagon. You won't like him. Why not? Because he's a geek. I like geeks. His name is Hoffman. Dustin? Hoffman's his first name. Oh, that's not a first name. And his last name is Kent. That's a first name. Hoffman Kent. Don't you mean Hoffman, comma, Kent? Well, it should be, but he's a geek. He doesn't know, you know? No, I didn't know. Do you want him to know? I don't know. Oh. You know, I read in the paper the other day that the average baby needs between 6,000 and 10,000 diaper changes. Yeah. Well. Obviously, I'm going to need a lot of help. Well, I won't promise anything to do with Pampers, but I would not be averse to light babysitting, being called Aunt Molly. You're shortlisted for godmother, if that's okay. Well, I'd be honored. Well, I just want to say hi. Hi. It's going to be fine. Why do people do these things? Because they're people. <sighs> it's a 
girl, by the way. Girls are nice. I'll keep you posted, okay? Yeah. I'll be here. Probably rearranging these boxes. crazy on the weekends. <laughs> they pack them in like sardines. Well, it's better this way. Quiet. I had kind of a loud day. Yeah? Mm. Oh, we don't have to talk. We can just listen. What exactly are we listening to? Oh, that's blame it on my youth. No, that is not blame it on my youth. Of course it is. No, one of us must be tone deaf. Then it's a foggy day. Well, no, see, that's not the foggy day that I know. The more I see you? No. Nope. No, dancing on the ceiling. <laughs> Wrong. Obvious. Unbelievably obvious. Just listen. Mountain greenery. Oh, please. <laughs> Spring can really hang you up the most. No way. Oh, not a chance. Hey, I'm here every night, kids. Yeah, but... You I know, mean... if that's not dancing on the ceiling, I'll eat my hat. <laughs> oh, well, how about something to wash it down? Do you have a house wine? Swine, yeah, we got a lot of those. Wine, wine. Oh, yeah. We got a Cabernet that's kind of impish. And a Zinfandel that comes in a can. Boy, you know, it's been a long time since I've had a good can of wine. But, uh, you know, I think that I will stick with the Cabernet. I would join you, but I'm allergic to the tannic acid. I bet you'd like a Stoli with a twist. Yeah, but without the twist. Gotcha. Virgin vodka. Vodka has the fewest congeners of any liquor. Yeah, well, everybody knows that. So what's a congener? Flavorings, additives, the sugar. The stuff that gives you a headache and a hangover. Ah, yeah. They did a study. Red wine hangovers are the worst. Yeah, I did the same study. They're right. And the citric acid and the twist of lemon just makes my eyes all itchy. Ah, <laughs> so it would be a mistake to rub your face in veal piccata. <laughs> I just think you should know this about me. What? I'm not perfect. Ah, oh, well, you know, I'm leaving. I mean, I have allergies. Well, I threw up on my date in high school, so, you know, we all have our crosses to bear. I'll run a tab. Uh, could you ask the piano player what it is she's playing? I tell her to stop trying to trick us. Uh-huh. Here's to you. Wine comes in at the mouth. Love comes in at the eye. And that is all we shall know for truth before we grow old and die. So I raise my glass to my lips, and I look at you, and I sigh. Hickory dickory dock. <laughs> Mine was Mother Goose who wrote yours. William Butler Yeats. Well, it was lovely, thank you. It just seemed like something appropriate. Mm. And do you quote poetry to all the girls, Nathaniel? Oh, no, no, no. Not Yeats. I save him for the big moments. You're a surprising person. Poor cop. And for anybody. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really great to see you, Well, Molly. it's good to see you, Nate. Uh, did you catch that rapist? No, no, he got away. So, how was your day? Um, puzzling, I guess. Uh, unsettling. My best friend, well, at least my oldest friend, is pregnant. Nina Shapiro? Well, right. Oh, yes. And then I'm starting yet another new job, and uh, my mother sent me this whole room full of boxes. Boxes? Big boxes. Big boxes of what? Of, uh, oh, gosh, dolls, love letters, notebooks, my father's sticks and brushes, a, a decoder ring from my sixth grade boyfriend whose name I've been trying to remember all day. Boxes. Boxes of history. Hmm. And now I think, uh, well, I'm afraid that my mother might have sold the house that I grew up in, my, my daddy's house. I know all the 
secret places there. I know the shortcut across the Osborne's lawn, how to get underneath the porch. My name was Malcolm. Who? Malcolm Frisch. That was my sixth grade boyfriend. That was his name. And he got shot in Vietnam. It's her house, you know. I just wish she'd told me. It all just goes so fast. It's okay. We'll just slow it down. What's new? Well, we've had kind of an emotional thing here, but uh, I don't know that it concerns you. That's what she's been playing. What's new? Oh, not even close. Who told you that? She did. Yeah, well, she's wrong. What's new? That's ridiculous. What song have you been listening to? Hey, what do you take us for? You know, you can't get away with this. Hey, don't shoot me. I'm not the piano player. <laughs>